This episode of the Swiftcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Who? The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. They That's are in bet. Ohio. They are an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Check out the Mad Canadian and his food truck this Sunday at the New Regal Food Truck Fundraiser in downtown New Regal. This Sunday, 2.30 to 5.30. Cancel your plans. Cancel your NFL games. Go get some of that delicious barbecue from the Mad Canadian. 2.30 oh. to 5.30 again. Check We're out the Mad Canadian social time. media sites at Facebook and Twitter <laughs> for more information about him and his food truck. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by... The Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who? See how that's that's how you do it. That's how you do it. The Iron Bean Coffee Company uh, is a premium small batch roast to order veteran owned coffee company. All of their coffee is fair trade certified and USDA organic. Uh, this ensures that you are getting the most fresh and most moral coffee you could possibly be getting. Uh, they ship in their coffees from many far off lands, including Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, uh, in, in many cases work directly with the farms. Several of their coffees are single origin, i.e. single be, uh, single farm coffees. Um, again, all of this ensures that you're getting a coffee product that is both consistent and great again and morally upstanding and what else would you expect from a ohio owned run marine owned run company you can find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com that is iron bean coffee america's local coffee roaster how's it going everybody how's it going all in our chat today hope everyone's doing well Yeah, uh, let's see. We uh, we lost a Stuart, but we gained a gangland. So he brings a different type of shenanigans. They're both shenanigizers. Shenana. Mm -hmm. I, I can't. I'm gonna figure out what to, how to how to use that word or what word to use there. Um, it's 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 a different flavor of shenanigans. All right. Well, enough with the shenanigans. Let's let's get the episode started, Jared. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right. How are you doing today, Jared? Uh, you know, it's a it's another it's another football. It's another football weekend. Um, and because of everything that happened in 2020, I, I it's 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 really helped me appreciate the fact that we we have yet another football weekend. Um, I'm I feel the need, rightly or wrongly. To point out to everyone right now uh, that Ohio State has played six games to this point, which is the entirety of how many games they played in the regular season last year. Um, Are they going to be worn out now, Jared? No. How many games? No, I, I don't think so. Um, so I just just uh, maybe a moment of a. Uh, a moment of thankfulness, a, a moment of of gratitude for mm -hmm. for our listeners. Yeah. Well, to start us off, Jared, up uh, since our last recording here, it's come out that our last Indiana, recording, by the way, ended like ten minutes ago. <laughs> Indiana has officially now announced that they will be starting their true freshman against Ohio State, so he'll be throwing his first collegiate pass against the Buckeyes. Why does that crap come out the moment we stop recording Know Your Enemy? That, actually, you know what, Kyle? This is the first time this has happened to us in a while. I actually, I have, to, I have to say, this is the first time this has happened to us in a while. Uh, and yes, for everyone playing at home, we record both of the Thursday and Friday episodes on Wednesday nights. So, um... Yep. Thank you, Gangland, for that. As we were recording, he got, he posted that for us. It's like, oh, well, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right. So, so for yeah. that over under on a defensive ends, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. All right. All right. That Jared, would have helped, it, Nomad. It, all right. Today's episode, we get to do some collegiate chaos. We get to we get to talk about um, collegiate chaos is our Tuesday episode. We get to do sloop picks. <laughs> that is right. It is our sloop <laughs> picks. It is our sloop picks in this episode. I don't know where my mind's going, but let, let's let's get into it. We we already covered the Ohio State game on Thursday, so you want to if you want to hear more about us talking about the Ohio State Indiana game, check out our Thursday episode. But let's let's get right into the games here, Jared. First game here. Ooh, well, Wake Forest. I just yeah. just I, I always want to do this at the top. You can hear us go into detail on the Ohio State game on the Thursday episode, but um, we all three picked Ohio State to win and cover. Yes. And Ohio yeah. State is a 19 or we'll say 19 and a half point favorite. Wake Forest taking on Army West Point. Yeah. New kick, um, new kick, new kickoff in Wake Forest is a three and a half point favorite against Army. Army strong. Army strong, Army smash. Um, yeah, it's it's wild that, that uh, we feel the need <laughs> to uh, pay attention to this game. But that that's the world we're living in right now because of the because of the the ACC situation. Uh yep. Our, our slip picks are very ACC heavy this week, um, which is weird. But yeah, they have three, four and one teams. None of them are Clemson. And we have Wake Forest going up against Army in a game with very serious, because all Wake Forest games at this point have very serious <laughs> meaning within the ACC. Um, Yet, even against an army team, Wake Forest is still only favored by three and a half points. I think we we took we took it to Wisconsin pretty hard on our previous. Um, we dropped them a tier in our tier rankings during our collegiate chaos episode for only beating army by six points. And here's here's Wake Forest favored by three and a half. Um, Wake Forest's time is coming um, but I don't think it's coming this week. Three and a half points is not enough to scare me off. Um, although it should be noted, they only beat Syracuse by three last week and they only beat Louisville by three the week before. So maybe it should be enough to scare me off. Uh, but, uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take Wake Forest anyway. Yeah, I, I agree. Three and a half is not quite a pick them, but I, I'll, I'll still take Wake Forest to to win this game, though. So I also have Wake Forest. Uh, let's see. Our special guest picker this week is uh, one of our most seniored fans. Somehow that sounded worse. Anyway, he's <laughs> one of our most seniored fans, uh, Sean Brawley. Uh, he uh, says that... Army covers. Haven't seen either team play, but Wake Forest is going to lose at some point. So why not versus Army? Hey, I I'm not going to fault that logic. I I do I do think Wake, Wake Forest's time is coming, but I don't think it's this week. Yep. All right. This is the big noon kickoff game, Jared. Oh God, is it? <laughs> it's noon, and it's on Fox. <laughs> And it's a it's a pair of mediocre Big Ten teams. That's right. I said it. Come at me, Michigan fans. Michigan and Northwestern. Michigan is a 21 and a half point favorite. And Jared. Yeah. I don't think North, I don't think Michigan will cover that. I, I, th yeah. I think Michigan will win easily. But 21 and a half. You got to score more than three touchdowns. I'll take I'll take Northwestern here. I, th I think Michigan will win by like 17 points or so. But yeah, I'll take I'll take the Wildcats to cover. Maybe maybe, maybe it's the maybe it's the um, maybe I have a little bias in me, but <laughs> who cares? Who cares? I don't give a shit. I'll pick I'll pick I'll pick, <laughs> I'll pick the Wildcats. Kyle, what's the spread again? Twenty one and a half. Thank you. Uh during Big Ten play, during Big Ten play, Michigan has not beat a team by 21 and a half points. Uh, 
they beat Rutgers by exactly, or excuse me, they beat Wisconsin by exactly 21. They even beat Washington by exactly 21. Uh, Nebraska, they only beat by three. Rutgers, they only beat by seven. Uh, this number, and by the way, Northwestern's bad, I acknowledge, uh, but this number just feels way too high to me. I expect Michigan to win. I expect Michigan to uh, not really even be sweating it that much in the fourth quarter. Uh, but 21 and a half, that's, that's just, that's too much. Agreed. Agreed. So, and how, how is, how is Michigan Vegas wise 21 and a half, but Ohio State and Indiana is only 19 and a half? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, uh, Vegas, Sean, Vegas has built, Vegas has, has built all bunch of buildings because of all this so who do i what do i know <laughs> uh vegas had i think it was last week or maybe it was the week before one of their worst weeks ever as far as like the amount of money they lost uh, but uh, oops uh let's see real quick sean brawley yep. not real quick i'm giving him the appropriate amount of time uh it says about the northwestern michigan game northwestern is bad bad Michigan should cover, but I'm not too confident in this one. Hopefully the Michigan passing passing game picks up a bit for them to win by 22. All right, everybody, everybody, we, you, you need to shame, you need to shame up uh, Brawley for this one here. Not, not, not for saying Michigan will cover. I, I, that's fine. I, I've, ta- I think I've, I think I've taken Michigan to cover hopeful. more than once this year, he's, but he's, yeah, he's you say hopeful. it. He's hopeful that Michigan's passing game picks up. The hell, Sean? No. What are you doing? All right. Next game here. We're heading down to ACC territory. We got Clemson taking on Pittsburgh. Yeah. Pittsburgh is a three and a half point favorite. I think it opened up as a one point. Now it's, it's now it's at a three and a half point favorite. Yeah. Can <laughs> it is favored over Clemson. I'm, I'm going to say it again. Hit is favored over Clemson. What and how? Well, for one thing, Michigan, uh, Michigan, Clemson can't score. Uh, their offense is atrocious. Uh, they're only getting 20 and a half points per game. And uh, that that number is inflated by an overtime loss. <laughs> ah, it's not really inflated by the overtime loss, but uh, it's inflated by a victory over South Carolina State. That's for sure. Against Syracuse, they only score 17. Against Boston College, they only score 19. Against Georgia Tech, they only score 14. Uh, In their in their last few games, uh, NC State, they only scored 21, but they only scored 14 of that in regulation. Point is, is that. During the last four games, Clemson has failed to score 20 points in regulation. Uh, And Pitt has has Kenny Pickett. I mean, when in doubt, pick the quarterback and and all (laughs) here. Here's a wild one for you. Pitt has the better quarterback. When was the last time Pitt had a better quarterback than Clemson? Uh, yeah. Uh, when in doubt, pick the quarterback. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Not only do I expect Pitt to win this game, I expect them to win it by more than three and a half uh, based entirely on, on on Kenny Pickett versus DJ Uyunglele. Marino, when was Marino at Pitt? No, actually, when was Marino at Pitt? That was what? Early 80s, maybe 79, 81, Nomad says. That sounds about right. Yeah. 40 years ago. Um, yeah, but, but I'm sure game, it's I, not the last time. I, For the record, look, I'm sure that's not the last time. I look at this game and I think pick them. And so you're, you're, giving, you're giving three and a half there to Clemson. So I'll, I'll pick Clemson to cover, but... Man, I, I first still you want, I want, steal my who ad read. Now you're stealing the I don't know. Pick the underdog from me. <laughs> I, I I I hope it I hope it wins here. But man, it's 
I, th- I think it's going to come will. down to the wire or, or another or another overtime and win by three points. And, and that would be that would be a cover. I have I actually have a really hard time seeing Clemson winning this game. Mm-hmm. I, I have okay. a really hard time seeing it. All right. Brawley. He says here, Clemson's offense is going to click at some point. Their O-line is bad, but I think Dabo, Dabo knows that more than anyone. They scheme an offense to put points on the board and get the win and cover. Man, two, two in a row for Brawley. Two in a row for Brawley there. Well, he, he didn't say he hoped this time. No. Nah, he says he thinks. Better. He says he thinks. Better. And I think it's fair to assume that Clemson will improve as the season progresses, although the evidence is not there yet. And Nomad, you should be saying that to Brawley, not to me. <laughs> All right, um, that is three games, so we'll finish the other three after an ad break here, Jared. All right. All right. All right. Let's do Let's do an ad break. Uh, let's see. We talked some flavors. Uh, Iron Bean Coffee Company. We talked some flavors on the on the previous uh, episode during the middle ad read. So uh, let's take a look at uh, the whole shebang. I've been I've been telling you guys like now's the time to start shopping for Christmas. I'm telling you right now. Um it's the least time to start thinking about it again because the coffee's fresh. So maybe don't buy it yet. But <laughs> or or buy it right now. Buy it right now. Buy it right now. Sponsor, sponsor, sponsor. Buy it right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, the ultimate coffee sampler is what the whole shebang is. The whole shebang is is it 14, 12, 12 separate bags of coffee, all two and a half ounces. Uh, each that's two and a half ounces of beans, obviously, uh, you can get that either whole bean or the ground appears to be sold out at the moment, but you can still buy that whole bean. Uh, they'll probably add the ground back in here soon. Um, the entire thing brews, um, no, uh, let's see. Uh, you have here. Uh, listed from darkest to lightest, the fear, no evil, the fierce, the integrity, the drink from the skull of your enemy, the Odin, the dark Rocco, the Thor, the medium Rocco, the ride or die, the cast iron, the rage against the dying of the light and and the Loki. Kyle, I had not yet noticed on this page that this says this is listed from darkest to lightest. I did not know that the dark coffees were on a tier list. <laughs> I this is this is this is not a thing I knew. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to reconsider some things. But yeah, this, it's a sampler pack that gets you uh, one of each of all of the unflavored coffees. Uh, and you can you can buy a sampler pack of your very own. Maybe you don't know which one of the coffees you want yet. You well, know, you can figure it out um, for what is the uh, I mean, again, for all of the variety you're getting here, the low, the low price of just just 25 bucks so you can you can buy a sampler for yourself over at ironbeancoffee.com that is iron bean coffee america's local coffee roaster this episode is also brought to you by the mad canadian barbecue company mentioned at the start of the show where you can get the mad canadian where you can meet him at this sunday at 2 30 um let me let me give let me give you some some um reviews that's over at the mad canadian social media sites here uh Here's one saying the brisket, the mad Canadian brisket was absolutely delicious. All the sides are very good. They get five stars from me. Got another one here saying everything is a 10 making barbecue. Great. Can't say another one. Can't, can't say enough about their meals. So good. Um, another one, best ham, pulled pork and brisket I've ever had. Another one talking about the pulled pork and a fourth one talking about the pulled pork. This this Sunday, go go get some pulled pork. <laughs> go get some pulled pork over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Food Truck. Again, that is up at the um that is up at the um I'm drawing a blank on it. Yep, the new Regal Food Truck Fundraiser again this Sunday, 2 30 to 5 30. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. All right, Jared, next up here, they, Kyle, Kyle, before, mm-hmm. before, before we proceed, did they get you? Did they get you during the ad read? Did, did the Sloop Cats down in the live chat get you during the ad read? 
They're claiming they got you. Of what? That they made you break during an ad read. No, I wasn't actually looking at him. Oh. I wasn't looking at them. Oh, Kyle's denying you the victory. Sorry, guys. All right, next game up, Kyle. Yep, Oklahoma State and Iowa State. 3.30 on Fox and Jared. Yeah. Iowa State. Yeah. Iowa State. Yeah. Six and a half point favorite. Not not two and a half, not three and a half, six and a half. Not Oklahoma State. The the Cowboys. Um, yeah, that's I why 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 is everyone so surprised? I have been telling you and everyone that Oklahoma State is one of the worst. What are they now? Six? Yeah. Six and O teams I have ever seen in my entire life. This is not a good football team, RJ Young. This is not a good football team. I, they're a six point dog to Iowa State. Um, and Iowa State, you know, is a team that I think is probably disappointing um, compared to, you know, what we saw for them last year. But I think they're. They're trying to figure it out. There's still some good talent there. The coaching is still really good there. Um, Iowa State's a good football team. Are they as good as they were last year? No. Uh, but I, you know, I, I don't think based off of what they're able to achieve recruiting wise, it's fair to expect Iowa State to be good every single year. You know, much like mm-hmm. Iowa or Northwestern, there's going to be ups and there's going to be downs. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think not, not only. Is it real obvious to me that Iowa State wins this game? Like we're we're gonna drop a team chaos here and it's gonna feel like cheating. Mike Gundy is gonna be in the thumbnail on the Tuesday episode. Like right, I'm I'm so calling have, the shot. So do you have Iowa State covering? I do. It's it, to, this is an obvious, obvious win for Iowa State. And I I think that they win and they win easily and they they win by I would say 10 or more. And I'm oh, I'm even wow. feel like I'm being conservative by saying that. I'll take I'll take the Cowboys here. I I think Iowa State will win, but I think it's going to just come down to the wire here. So I'll I'll take the Cowboys to cover in this. Brawley says here Oklahoma State covers. Not sure why they're they're the underdog. This is a weaker ISU team this year. OK State is an all right Big 12 team and has a shot to win the conference. Oh, no, they do not. Not, not o- Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Not, not, not since Oklahoma changed their quarterback. May, <laughs> maybe if Rattler was still the QB at Oklahoma, but now, not, not now they don't. Um, <laughs> all right, Jared. Next up on our list here. Nope, this is not a Pac-12 after dark. But it is Oregon taking on is, UC- was It's a what? noon game for them. It is. Oregon and UCLA. 3.30 on ABC. And I, I had to really zoom in here, make sure I'm reading that as a minus and not a plus here, Jared. UCLA is a two and a half point favorite over Oregon. Yep. Uh, yeah, this is another game in which we have uh, a high possibility for chaos, and this would be great news for uh, maybe not so much, maybe not so much Ohio State, but if there's any Bearcat fans or at least Bearcat sympathizer sympathizers out there, um, keep an eye on this game uh, because this game could essentially eliminate the Pac-12 from the playoffs. Uh, I is I'm not I'm not going to look it up right now, but is anyone other than Oregon only have one loss in the Pac-12 at this point? Um, Because Ar- didn't Arizona State get their second one last week? Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Yeah, Oregon is the only team left with one loss. Yeah. So this is the elimination. This is the game that puts, in my opinion, this is the game that puts um, that puts the Pac-12 out of the playoff. Uh, at least it could be. It, it kind of feels like a coin flip, in all honesty. This feels like a bit of a coin flip game, uh, which is why I'm going to take. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take Oregon, only because uh, they're the they're the dog here. Um, 
but keep an eye on this game. This should be a very good game. And like I said, it could be the game that eliminates the Pac-12 from the playoffs once again. And you know what, Jared? This game will end the Pac-12 playoff hopes. I got UCLA to cover in this game here. Give give me UCLA. What does brawls? I, I I haven't read. I don't read these beforehand. But I, but I know I know Sean has been a uh, UCLA cheerleader all all let's, season. Let's, so let's, what does he have to say? What, yep. Let's see what he says here. I'll, I'm still riding the UCLA train despite the losses. Dorian Thompson Robinson is the best hy- hyphenated. I had to make sure I read that right. Hyphenated name to play for the Bruins since Maurice Jones Drew. And Oregon is riddled with injuries. Bruins win and cover. How about yeah. that, Jared? How about I, that's, that? That, that? That's a good analysis right there. All right. Last up here, we're heading back. You know, who is it in here? Is it Nomad? I think it was Nomad in the chat here calling me an ACC homer. I just, for the fact here, for the fact, Jared's choosing these games and we have yet another ACC matchup here. They're interesting. They're interesting right now. What do you want me to say? Okay. Uh, I think, again, we're, we're ta- if, if, if we go back to what we've been saying for years on this show, which is that, you know, you just don't lose twice. That, that's yeah. been our playoff mantra for years on this show. Don't lose twice. Ooh. There are three teams in the ACC who have one loss. Those three teams are represented in these sloop picks. There's only one team left in the Pac-12 with one loss. That game represented in these sloop picks. Guys, it's almost like I I I have a I have a system for picking these games. <laughs> All right. And this game is the Wolfpack of NC State taking on Miami. Ooh, Miami. Ooh, Ooh yeah, I have that. Mm. Well, that should say a lot about my pick here. NC State is a three and a half point favorite. I got the Wolfpack. I think Wolfpack's defense is just going to be too much for Miami. Miami is going to struggle. NC State to cover. NC State to cover. Yeah. NC State might win seven nothing in this game. <laughs> well, hold on. Let's I I have I have this up. Uh, yeah. Over under is only at 51 and a half. Under, under. <laughs> I'm going to take the under on that. Um, yeah, here's total, total coin flip game, total coin flip game in my mind. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take Miami only because they're the underdog. Um, that That's it. That, that's that's the tweet. That's the whole analysis. What does right. Sean have to say? NC State covers. Miami is god awful. NC State is middle of the road. Good. Yeah. But Miami is still way worse. Excellent analysis right there by Brawley. Okay, Kyle. So where does that put us as far as our our breakdown of games here? Um, we all three take Ohio State. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I took Wake. Uh, Sean took Army and you took I Wake. Took Wake. Yep. Uh we both took Northwestern, but Brawley took Michigan. Mm-hmm. Um, I took Pittsburgh. Sean took Pittsburgh. Who did, or excuse me, Sean took Clemson. Who did you take? I took Clemson. Okay. So I'm, I'm alone on that one. Uh, I was the lone person to take Iowa state. Is that right? You were. Yes. Okay. Um, Oregon, UCLA, I was the lone person to take Oregon, correct? Yep. And who cares about NC State and Miami? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you do. You picked it. You picked I, the game. There, listen, you, you want to know there, there are two things that happened with me picking these slip picks this week. One, mm-hmm. I was trying to get a good mixture of time slots. That's a thing I try and do. Well, I was trying take- to well, get... I was trying to get a bunch of these one loss teams in here. Mm-hmm. And uh, most important thing to remember with this week's sloop picks is that it's kind of a crummy weekend. So I didn't well, have why, a lot to pick from. Pick a, why don't you pick a one loss Notre Dame team? Uh, 
I don't know. Notre Dame and USC. I could have. I could have. That feels like such a laundry game, doesn't it? Isn't that just a laundry game? If that was not two established brands, would we care? The teams aren't that good or that relevant. Who cares? It's it's a laundry game. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's all the games here. Let's answer some uh, some questions here. So Nomad asks, what is your record definition of good, great and elite team for this year? Uh, For this year. (sighs) To me, the elite team is the team that you just can't see losing right now. And to me at this moment, I don't think, I don't think that team exists. Um, I felt that way. I think the last time I saw a team that I felt like was unbeatable at this point in the season, because I think Bama got there last year, but they weren't there at like the half point of the season. But the last team I saw and identified as like, oh, God, I don't think anyone's touching that team this year would have been Burroughs LSU. I think for this, I I think for this year, my definition of elite would be because I agree with Jared, like that. I don't think this year it's like, like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to play that team right now. But this year for elite, I would just classify elite as teams that I can easily see winning the national title. And right now I can see that being essentially um, three teams right now. I can see it being three teams. Well, okay. Don't don't just say it. Don't just say it. Who are they? Well, I, I think right now it's Georgia, Bama and Ohio State. Now, good. Now, great team. Great teams are ones that, yeah, they they they'll win. They can have a chance to win their conference, and they have a shot of making the playoffs. And that would be, that would be like your Oklahomas. That would be, um, Oregon, Oregon, Penn State. I think Penn State has. You could put Penn State in there. I don't think Penn State beats Ohio State, but they can. They're capable mm-hmm. of it. And I, and I think this year. Under great, I think you would have to put Cincinnati in there, too. They won all their games. They beat Indiana. They beat Notre Dame. But I wouldn't I wouldn't think of them as an elite team this year. I just I don't I don't see it from a town. I, 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 I love fickle. I want Cincinnati to do well. I hope they make the playoffs. I do. Um, I just the, the talent level just just isn't there to yep. compete in the college football playoffs and then, and, then, um, and then a good team and then a good team is a team that that can surprise and and beat a great team from time to time yeah uh that's i i think i think that's about right okay uh, who's your buckeye zach asks in a realistic discussion whom do you perceive as the best three quarterbacks in college football up to this point point who the best three college footballs college footballs college football quarterbacks to this point um i don't think it's i don't think it's it's young at bama um and it's not a that's not a disrespect to him um i i think he like cj stroud benefits greatly by the people around him um i see matt Carell uh mentioned in the chat i think that's i think that's a that's a good i don't know god this is i think kenny pickett's very good um i think that i think uh gangland says i think stroud is much better than young um I get I, I want I want to see CJ Stroud play Penn State, Michigan State, Michigan before I before I say that. Uh, but I'm leaning that way as well. 
Yeah, I agree. Uh, who's your buck? Who, who's your Buckeyes access? Uh, Pickett is having a good season, but I don't know if he's top three. I don't know either. Um, God, I, I really like again, I don't think there's any real elite teams right now. I don't see any elite quarterbacks right now. Um, no, I no. I see I a lot either. of guys who could be. I see a lot of guys who might be. I if you're if you're in the NFL right now and you're expecting to have the first overall pick, and you need a quarterback, who are you taking? Stroud could be there. Stroud could be there again. I want to see. I want to see it against Penn State, Michigan State, Michigan before I start making that declaration. Yeah, I think the best three right now. I think you adding Corral in there, and I think you. I mean, statistically wise, you you can't ignore you can't ignore Stroud right there. He's he's yeah. near the top. He's near the top, if not the top in all the major categories right now. So. You, you you have to include Stroud in there. I'm thro- throwing out my my Homer hat here. You, you, you just have to. Eighteen touchdowns, three interceptions, great ratio. Uh, what what does what does um, Corral have? Well, Corral actually has better, fourteen to one. <laughs> but a third a third player, I, I don't. I have a hard time trying to figure out a a third player right I, now. I like Casey Thompson, the, the quarterback at Texas. Um, I don't, I, I don't think he has, I mean, obviously B. John Robinson's great, but um, it's not, it's not, I, he doesn't have the same supporting cast around him that, that, that young and Stroud do. Mm-hmm. And no disrespect to, to Robinson, who's great. Um, yep. And, Utah is struggling as a team this year, but I like their quarterback, although I can't think of his name off the top of my head. Um, The Wake Forest quarterback isn't bad. Um, I just I don't know. Yeah, I just. There's not there's not an elite crop of quarterbacks who I'm willing to crown as elite right now. Sorry, what? Sam Hartman. That's the Wake guy. I still can't think of the uh, Utah guy's name. Um, um, oh, I my think- God. Yes. Thank you, Buckeye Zach. Um, Riddle is having an excellent season for Cincinnati right now. He thank is. you. Yeah. I to- That totally slipped my mind. Yeah, he's having an excellent season. Um, again, really had, like has, with again, like really with Stroud, I'm mm-hmm. sorry, what he hasn't really had to do much here. Uh, yeah, season. again, like with Stroud, though, it's partial. He doesn't he doesn't have the crew around him that Stroud has. But like if I'm going to say I want to see Stroud play against the big dogs of the Big Ten before I make that declaration and then turn around and crown Riddle, that would make me a hypocrite. So I don't I don't want to do that. Um yeah. All right, that is that is all the questions we have here, Jared. My bad. Think- Appar- apparently, oh, get Gangland said it first. My apologies, Gangland. Uh, reminded or attempted to remind me of Riddle first. Uh yeah. So I think uh, I think that's it. Uh, I thought was there another question? I thought I saw it here in the live chat that I think was pretty good. Is there any um, team outside of Bama that has a chance against Georgia? No. Yeah. George, no one's unbeatable. I'm telling there's not a team I consider elite right now. Yeah, I, I think Ohio State. Okay. I I think I saw somewhere because there's these websites you can go to and they simulate what the Vegas line would be. And I think they had Ohio State versus Georgia pick them. Yep. Georgia's Georgia has an amazing defense, especially along their defensive line, and they're crushing teams as a result. Um, that being said, when in doubt, pick the quarterback. And did did anyone even kind of want to maybe thinking about bringing up 
Fedora Bennett as the quarterback who you'd want on leading your team right now? That's right. Fedora Bennett. Who names their child after a hat? Is this Stenson Bennett, the fourth? God, it's not a football name. When in doubt, pick the quarterback, and that's not a quarterback I'm picking by by any stretch of the imagination. All right, Jared, go ahead and take us out of here. All right, everyone. Uh... If you want to join the live chat, call us an idiot in real time. Uh, you can do that by joining our Patreon for as little. <laughs> thank you, Gangland, for as little as three dollars a month. Um, yeah, got me. Um, and if you want to sort of try it before you buy it, you want to join our Discord community, which is like if you see this chat down, if the YouTube people can see this chat down here. This is streamed straight from Discord. It's just an app on your phone. It's a group chat. Uh, I haven't plugged any of our merch recently. Uh, we have Sloopcast specific merch over at merch.sloopcast.com. We have a bunch of cool stuff over there. Go check it out before Ohio State takes it away. Uh, and if you want to support us, uh, if you want to buy a T-shirt and support us, but you don't necessarily want to wear like podcast merch i get that you can go to 7071 that's 7071.thesloopcast.com and there's just like some ohio stuff there uh it, it's us it, it helps fund the podcast uh but it doesn't scream podcast merch so you you can you can go to that site and check out some of our cool stuff there um and uh, with all of that being, nope, nope, that's too soon on that. Kyle, what's in Kyle's corner? <laughs> um, I don't know. It's been a pretty, pretty dead week in news, honestly, here. So yeah, well, only two commitments, but we already covered that. I'm messing with you. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to go with uh, some some other news from today, too, that if some haven't seen because it is relevant for next weekend, the following weekend. Sean Clifford back in practice today, Jared. Thoughts no. on that? I, I, it's interesting. Uh, it also could be a smoke screen. Like it, it could just be Penn State putting stuff out there to make Ohio State blah, 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 blah. Um, yep, he's, yep, and he's, the, he's out there. He's out there doing drills. He's, he's taking snaps. He's throwing the ball. So I'm just going to, I'm going to throw this out there that typically Penn State is just as secretive about injuries as Ohio State is. So if this, this is, is out there, it's my suspicion that they want it out there. That's mm -hmm. my suspicion. Yep. Yep. So uh, easily could have been. Yep. It, it, feel, it feels it feels a bit like uh, counter ops to me. Mm -hmm. All right. That's it, Jared. That's all I have for today. That's it. You don't got anything else? I don't. The crew is playing right now and eh. <laughs> uh, it's it's it's, it's halftime. They're not losing. They're not losing, but they're not winning. But <laughs> um, I know I know a lot of people are excited that hockey's hockey's started now. Uh, so a lot of a lot of Blue Jacket fans are excited. Um, yeah, that's all I got today, Jared. All right. Um, tonight's ending music. Uh, will be brought to you by the Cordial Sins. They're a Columbus band who I like a lot. So you can. What are you? Are you? You you come in here. Your name is Hoosier Buckeye. So so you're rolling Hoosier, and, and now you're supporting a team from Detroit, a team from m m m m m Michigan. How dare you, good sir? How dare you? The Cordial Sins is what I was attempting to say uh, tonight. <laughs> tonight's ending music brought to you by the Cordial Sins. Uh, yeah, they're they're a great band. Uh, YouTube people, uh, click the link down below to hear the song. Uh, podcast people, uh, go ahead and uh, just do nothing and just continue to listen to the podcast. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Cordial Sins. 